Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and yeah, breaking down to bite-sized pieces. Really today, we've got one story, and that's this. Goldman Sachs senior exec on huge institutional demand for Bitcoin. And what this article allows us to do is to peel back the curtain and see not just what institutions are doing, but corporations, hedge funds, treasuries and pensions are thinking about Bitcoin and how bullish it is because they're actually talking about using Bitcoin for payments as opposed to a store of value. So we're going to dig deep into this one and we're going to try to talk about what this potentially all could mean for when the impending bear market comes about. So we'll take a look at this, but first let's take a look at what's going on into uh, the market. So uh, right now it is uh, March uh, 13th, uh, 5 p.m. Houston, Texas time. I'm with my, my guy Chewy here and uh, we're still in Houston because we uh, have this investment property and uh, there's just some problems that are coming up. So we need to make sure this is ready as we have all these uh, uh, people coming in through Airbnb to rent it out. And uh, it's been pretty good. We came here just about a week and a half ago or so. We got everything fixed up and ready to go put an Airbnb and now here we are. I think we're almost three months uh, booked for people to come in. So um, that's what's great. Uh, not really having a job, but there's no, I have no job. I mean, me and my wife just, wife just work for ourselves and we get to do things like this. So uh, this is always good news. So let's take a look what's going on. So if you haven't known, uh, Bitcoin just popped over uh, 60,000. So congratulations to all the Bitcoin holders. Every single Bitcoin holder today uh, is in profit. So congratulations to everybody. Uh, that is a pretty great thing. Also on top of that, uh, let's see, Ethereum's up 9%, uh, Binance coin. It just seems like when when Bitcoin goes up, everything else goes up. And that's just pretty much how it works. So if you're new to cryptocurrency, just remember that little sage advice, Bitcoin goes up. Usually a lot of things uh, go up, especially when we're hitting all-time highs. Uh, let's see, XRP 6.27 for Polkadot. Anything fantastic besides Bitcoin? 15% for EOS. Wow, that's crazy. 19% for Bitcoin SV. All right, sure. 3%, 9% for FTX token. 21% uh, for Sushi Swap. Huh, interesting. And then uh, some more stuff. Filecoin, 11%, and so on and so forth. So uh, let's just take a look real quick. Actually, let me blow this up so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, let's take a look at the sentiment score. Uh, through trade the chain and see what's going to be the next ones. This always just uh, gets me into my my inner trader. So take a look at uh, next Genesis Vision, Wan Chain, Emer, and U Trust. Those looks like they're uh, Decentraland, Pundi X, Pundi, <laughs> Pundi, and Ethereum Classic. So um, this part right here, I see this little middle number here for next, uh, four point two percent at thirteen percent. That's like nine ninety percent accuracy uh, for a trade the chain. Also on top of that, um, just so you know, talking about um, uh, institutions, I'll be on uh, the Alex Masioli show on Tuesday. Uh, Alex is uh, my main guy, my uh, uh, my my inner pipeline for all the different um, uh, institution gossip <laughs> things that are going on. And those guys are going to be t we're talking about their their personal portfolios. So I'll just be uh, be there for, uh, uh, I don't know, comic relief or something. So we'll see. We'll see how it all works out. I'll, sh I'll share the link uh, later on. All right. Let's get into today's uh, top story, shall we? And here we are. And Chewie's gone because he's lazy. All right. So what is this all about? Well, this one is important to me. It's interesting to me, I should say. Uh, because of a conversation that uh, uh, me and Alex Masculi were having, which was he believes that the reason why uh, Bitcoin and crypto really popped off was because of the coronavirus. And I told, I believe that too. He thinks that um, the reason was because everybody was at home and nothing to do. So they did a lot of research. And uh, of course, this was the time of the happening. So they, they figured out about that. They probably figured out some things about cycles. They probably looked at what it could actually do. They did some deep dives and uh, they figured out just how great crypto and digital assets could be. <clears throat> but he thinks that uh, once we started to get the vaccines, people started to do more things by themselves. Uh, you know, they're actually able to travel and uh, do other things. He says that uh, he thinks that crypto will actually drop off because people won't be as interested into it because they'll have other, other interests. And uh, that's the part where we diverge. I personally believe that uh, because everybody has been uh, very, you know, educating themselves, now they can have a more informed conversation uh, just for about Bitcoin, for example, and just say, hey, you know, Bitcoin is uh, gold 2.0. 
it's uh you can you can transfer it or spend it or send it anywhere in the world uh, to anyone in the world uh, in less than 30 minutes it uh, used to cost uh, a nickel and now it costs 50,000 actually 60,000 as of today it is the most uh, uh it's the best performing asset over the last 10 years and it's why i'm heavily invested into it that is my uh, bitcoin elevator pitch so if you've been to dan teaches crypto.com you know exactly what i'm talking about so when people started to hear about that like oh we'll tell me more you know how much was it a year ago wow five thousand now it's at sixty thousand wow tell me why it is is so great well decentralization and of course because of what's going on with the money printing and they went on that rabbit hole but uh i truly believe that now that people are educated they're able to go and um yeah intermingle with all the people that they know uh, maybe their jobs are, are more on site maybe they get together more with friends and family and they sort of talk about these things in person and i think that is actually going to lead to a bigger uh, influx of, of crypto users and uh, digital asset investors. And then, of course, that's why I created this website, danteachescrypto.com, because it's it's it goes over the, some basics and a little inter intermediate stuff, but it's 100% free. And when people go there and they learn about it, the only thing I ask is well, the only thing I ask is that you tell two people, uh, TTP, as I call it. And then uh, when you tell two people, they sign up and they learn more about it. And then it's just as a flywheel effect because I want you guys here with me uh, because I don't <laughs> just between us. Uh, it's kind of boring just being me sometimes because uh, all I really do is work. It'd be great if I had uh, some more friends who didn't have a job and they could <laughs> they could like, you know, do more things besides, you know, uh, working their asses off, you know, 60, 80 hours a week and then, you know, getting together uh, every so often. I just want people more like me. It's just a better life. That's that's all I can tell you. Anyhow, so that that is that is that part. And what we're going to talk about with this article is what's going to happen. Uh, I think as far as like institutions dumping on us uh, as time moves on, because guess what? The bear market's coming. All right. So here's what's going on uh, with this piece, and I'll go over this quickly. During a recent interview, Matthew McDermott, uh, head of digital assets for Goldman Sachs Global Market Division, talked about Bitcoin. Of course, he's the head of the department. He said in, in in terms of kinds of institutional demand, we have seen no signs of that abating. And when we talk about institutional demand, we talk about the whole cross-section of the industry sectors. The team have fielded well over 300 conversations, and I'm referring to hedge funds, asset managers, macro funds, banks, corporate treasurers, insurance, and pension funds. So when we hear about these these whole swaths of people, uh, it's, it's very interesting to say, like when we talk about institutions, it's not just like a certain institutions, it's all these different types of people that we just talked about, right? Corporations, the treasuries, the treasurers, the pension funds, hedge funds, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, so it's just a big swath of big money coming in. And all these different types, they're gonna have their own goals. Just like my goals for cryptocurrency are my goals, they're not your goals, right? And and, and uh, we talked about this uh, a couple of videos ago. I said, look, if you're in your you know your 40s and you got grandkids like myself, uh, you have a different goal than if you are in your 20s, just starting out, and uh, you know if you just want to be an investor, or as opposed to like. Uh, somebody who's in their 80s or 90s and they're like you know what i just i just want some some extra retirement income so again everybody's goal is different for as far as investors and everybody's goal is probably different as far as institutions and corporations and that's going to play a big factor into what happens as far as uh the bull and bear market in four-year cycles like i talk about so to continue on this is what he says. He goes, look, they're interested in two, they're interested in two different aspects. Firstly, should they invest in Bitcoin on the balance sheet? And that's what MicroStrategy did with Michael, you know, Michael Seller. That's what Tesla did, Elon Musk. That's what a uh, mass mutual uh, type of huge insurance company did. They just want to put in their treasury. They just want to hold on to it, and that's it. And that's great. You know, we welcome those people with open arms. Thanks for stabilizing the price a little bit, right? And then secondly, this was the most interesting thing. It, they're also thinking about it, particularly in the context of Tesla's announcement, which is, should we consider it as a payment mechanism? So first of all, if this was 20, thank God it was in 2017. There wasn't, in 2017, it was just vaporware. There was nothing really built. There was no tracks laid down. I, I don't know how institutions could have gotten in, but uh, in my thinking, I was always like, well, this is the future. So they'll just figure it out as time goes on. Yeah, they figured it out. But the first thing they did was they dumped everything. Uh, everybody dumped everything. And uh, then they built the rails in 2018, 19, and 20. And now here we're in 2021, and the institutions are here. 
but uh, it's just interesting to me that that these guys are saying, well, we're going to go against some of that store of value uh, talk, which is, they're probably still going to do. But now they're talking about payments. And if you run 2017, you know that payments, using Bitcoin as a, as a payment, as a decentralized payment, was awful. Uh, as more people used it, the uh, network became severely congested. It became super expensive and it became uh, incredibly um, a, a time waste, we would say, because what used to take like 30 minutes, 20, 15, 30 minutes was taking 12 hours, 24 hours, two days um, to send Bitcoin around. It was just awful. So then, you know, people came up with, with the Lightning Network and second layer solutions, which would be like off chain type of thing. But we're still not there. So it's great that these guys are talking about payments. But I don't think they really understand exactly what would happen if they did that with payments. It just wouldn't work. The only way it would work is if they did it just like how PayPal does. And this is, I think, the most interesting part. PayPal is going to give you, you people can buy Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. They're going to be able to roll it out to merchants in, I believe, quarter two. And they're going to roll it out globally if they haven't done it already. I always forget. So the thing is, once you're able to pay with, you know, on merchants with your PayPal account, let's say you have Litecoin, right? You say, I want to buy those shoes. And uh, Litecoin is, what, 100 bucks? Let's say it's, you know, new Wheezies. I don't know. And uh, you're like, I want some 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 Nikes. And here's, a, here's 100 bucks. Here's one Litecoin, right? You're not going to pay that merchant in Litecoin. They're not going to get Litecoin. It's all going to be transacted. Uh, but it's going to be really off-chain, and it's going to be settled in fiat, in cash. And what uh, PayPal is going to do is they're going to keep that cryptocurrency, and uh, they're going to get loaded. That's really what it really comes down to. So if these guys are thinking, yeah, we can do that, you understand what they're going to do is they're going to massively accumulate cryptocurrency uh, until it doesn't make any sense anymore. And that's really what it comes down to. So again, when we're talking about hedge funds and all these different places, uh, or institutions and corporations, they're not here to be our friends and to make sure that we're okay and we make a lot of money. Their job is to help them. And at some point, when it doesn't make any sense, they're going to sell. And uh, we've had, I've had back and forth w w with Alex about this as well. And he agrees. He's like, look, it's the same thing. And people say, well, Rob, you don't understand. This whole time is different. And I'm telling you right now, as long as there's still greedy people, as long as there's still people who like to manipulate the market and make a ton of money, as long as those things exist, and as long as corporations still have to answer uh, to their shareholders, um, then it's not going to be uh, that much different. I think there's still going to be a bear market. What goes up must come down. I don't care how great the asset actually is. Once we start to get to a state of FOMO, and there is just a parabolic hook that goes all the way up, there will be uh, huge problems down the pipe, and that's just how I see it. So anyhow, it's great that they're they're go they're looking for payments. I think they will accumulate massively, but I think if they accumulate massively, they will dump massively, and that's the big thing about it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep, and that's really where the skill comes in is when do you have that exit strategy to get out, to sell your positions and go from there. All right, so to finish this up, uh, it talks about hedge funds. Uh, what they're interested in is broader market behavior and really identifying what are the most efficient ways for them to get exposure and to think about hedging. And of course, that is exactly what I just talked about. Um, these hedge funds, there's no love there. They're like, look, we're here for profits. And if we don't make profit, we're out. So this was just, a, I thought, a pretty a good piece about what was going on. And uh, the last thing I want to say about is this, is because all these different places we just talked about are considered smart money, right? So if they're all smart money, then they know what you know, they know what I know, and they know about the four-year cycle like we talked about. 2012, there's a halving. Uh, 2013, all-time high. 2014, there's a dip. 2015, there's a reset. 2016, there is a halving. 2017, all-time high. 2018, dip. 2019, reset. 2020, there is a halving. 2021, we're going to hit all-time highs. 2022, maybe a little bit sooner, we're going to see a dip. And then 2023, a reset, and everything starts again. So, but here's the big thing. If all these institutions and all these corporations, all these people know about it, they know about these four-year cycles. They know that, that I know it. They know that you know it. They know that everybody knows it. The question is, will they front run this bear market and go, you know what? Once we see this hockey stick, instead of it letting to go to like from a 
you know, 130,000 of Bitcoin up to 150, 200, 210,000. We're just going to cut it off at a certain point and just start selling. And then once you see somebody sell a mass amount of Bitcoin, you have to understand the people that are getting in uh, after you are actually a lot of people right now. There was a survey. One in three people don't know what the hell they're actually uh, investing in. They were like, look, I bought Bitcoin at, at 110,000 and uh, or 130,000. And now I went out to 80,000. Uh, this is junk. Or it goes to 130, even 120. They're like, this is junk. I'm out of here because they don't understand. And then before you know it, they sell. Yeah, of course, the institutions sell first, drops it. These guys don't know what the hell they're doing. They sell second, third, fourth, fifth, one millionth. And before you know it, the whole thing goes down 40, 50, 60%, 70%. And then, of course, the uh, news rags pick it up. CNBC, MSNBC, and like, see? We told you it was a bubble. Then you got Rubini out, out, out there, and Peter, uh, whatever that guy's name is, that gold bug guy. I will never say his name. Um, they're going to be out there going, yep, yeah, yeah, I told you, told you. I told you. He's just so stupid. You should have listened to me. You should have bought you know, tomatoes or whatever. And then before you know it, we're in another bear cycle. So I know when people say this is different, it's not different. That's just how it is. All right. So uh, that was my rant for a little bit. So first of all, if you made it all the way in, uh, I want to say thanks for sticking with me. If you liked that video and you found some value, give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And uh, that is it. Uh, also, I'll put two more videos up on the left and right. Uh, one of our top stories that'll come up and uh, that is all so thanks for watching i appreciate it see you in the next one